to call a roll to establish who's here. Commissioner Richardson, are you here? Here. Commissioner Colleen, are you here? Yes. Commissioner Vines, are you here? Yes. Have I overlooked any commissioners? Okay, not yet. They can join us in progress. Commissioners, has anyone read the minutes of the last meeting? I have. I have. Uh, I move to approve. Is there second. A second. Is there a discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Those will be our minutes. Commissioners, looking at the agenda, are these. We have anything to say about these agenda items? Commissioner Colleen. I must recuse on item B, sir. Okay. Noted. Oh, wow. These are nice. Um, uh, Commissioner Colleen recused himself from a discussion of agenda item B. And I note for the record those. that Commissioner Robinson has arrived. Yeah. We have approved the minutes and so we've cool. made the necessary notes about the agenda. Is there any objection to using the same role to approve the agenda? Hearing none, then the agenda is approved by the previous role. Let's call agenda item A5539, Pershing. Staff first. Uh, Jan Cameron, Culture Resources Office. Preliminary review application for the construction of a seven-story apartment building on this site in the 5500 block of Pershing in the Central West End Historic District. It is also in the Devolver Place neighborhood. Some of the people here in the audience tonight are from the neighborhood as opposed to the Central West End Association. Uh, was this ever an eight-story building? Not that I know of. Okay. This well, I, 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 must have, I must have dreamed it. I, I had asked Barb that. It's fine. Go ahead. Um, this site was actually approved for a different building, oh, uh, which you'll see in a minute, um, in 2015 by the Preservation Board. The, the tennis court. Here we cut out for you. Um, and that's the uh, irregularly shaped lot. Now, I should say that the same developer that's doing this new building owns buildings on the side, I believe. The rendering of the building will say that the architect has responded to several of the uh, uh, comments of the preservation staff um, and has removed the garage door from the front elevation to the side. And um, other than the scale of the building, which is pretty much a fait accompli, the staff is recommending approval. This is the site plan. And the front elevation, you can see that while it is a seven-story building and therefore is a very large mass, the interior is recessed into what they're calling a courtyard. These are the elevations of the courtyard and the side elevations. It's predominantly brick with two colors of cement board. And the architect is here to, with the uh, material samples that he can explain if you have some questions. Um, this is uh, the streetscape. Now, this is the old design with the garage door, so ignore that. But unfortunately, while there are larger buildings on the south side of this block of Pershing, most of the buildings, actually all the buildings, but this on the north side are two, three-story, are three-story condominiums and apartments. So this is going to be a very large mass. This is the previous design that was approved for the site in 2015. I put this in there so you could see that that was a five-story building, but it also shows the uh, context of the block better. This is the building that was originally proposed, the design was originally proposed for the site. This currently being constructed on the south side was approved by the previous director without going to the board because the design had already been approved by the board. That's Tribeca. Um, this is directly across from it, a historic six-story building. And these are the smaller scale three stories site. That existing drive will be used for the new building, the entry to the parking. So there's no new curb cut proposed. General context. Again, the larger buildings on the south. 
And the project site is on the far left of the left shot. And I'm right here, I'm standing in the driveway shooting towards the building under construction. So you can see it's, the proximity is very close. So the staff is recommending approval the staff, that the Preservation Board grant preliminary approval to the project with the usual conditions for us to re review the final details and exterior materials. Okay. Questions on this side? So, Jan, you mentioned the scale, you know, being sort of large, but it does meet with zoning requirements. And I, I know that's not what we're here to talk about, but is, is uh, that in question? I might ask the architect about that. But, but I haven't heard that it doesn't. And you have, that's not an issue of yours at this point. Right, and it, it meets the required parking spaces okay. for zoning. Thank you. Questions on this side? <laughs> yes, sir. Um, maybe you mentioned it, um, but can you just recap why the design was, was changed? Um, I mean, I know that the front-facing garage was an issue, but it, why did it go from five stories to seven, and why did the aesthetic of the design change? Well, it, when we received the initial application, it was a seven-story building. So that hasn't changed. Okay. But the previous design that the board approved in 2015 was only five stories. So that's the distinction there. Okay. It is bigger than it was. It's larger and it has more units. And did you mention community consultation to me? Oh, I didn't, and I'm sorry. I have a, an email addressed to the director from uh, the alderman who says she has no objection to the current design. I'll submit. I have not heard directly from the Central West End Association. Okay. Great, thank you. Okay, let's have the applicant. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I don't have a whole lot more to add, uh, Jens. For, for the record, add your name. Oh, my name is Daniel Scott. I'm the development architect for VE Design Group. Mm -hmm. uh, we're based out of Springfield, Missouri. This is one of several projects that we have going in the St. Louis area um, for our own firm as well as for the developer that's working on this project. Was your experience in working with the cultural resources staff satisfactory? Oh, it was very satisfactory. Um, we um, uh, took their list of recommendations and um, and adopted every every one of those. That thought, thought they were they were very sound in their reasoning. Had absolutely no problem making the changes that they requested. And you'll feel comfortable working with them to have the exterior materials reviewed. Absolutely. Okay. This is a similar set of materials that we've uh, uh, done on a, on a project um, in Whistler uh, in the Sular District, and um, so they they have a good track record. Mm -hmm. And you'll be doing glass and steel on the next one. I don't think so. Okay. <laughs> Questions on this side? No, sir. Questions on this side. Commissioner Richardson, have you got a mo Oh, no, there is testimony. I'm sorry. Thank you very much. Thank you. Tracy Rennison. I almost overlooked you. I apologize. That's all right. Uh, my name is not, Tracy. Not if you came all the way down here and parked, it isn't. Metro. Oh, even better. Yeah. Um, you, have, you have to lime bike home, though. <laughs> My name is Tracy Renison. I live at 437 Clara Avenue, number 15, and I've lived in the neighborhood many years. And I have a few concerns, um, I, and also I have questions. One question I have in particular, um, the same company is uh, building, putting up a building across the street, of course, from this site. It is six stories. I'd like to know why seven? I mean, even in the information level, not appear to comply Is that because of the seven stories I mean they're putting six across the street is it possible that this one should be six also that's good. one question I have good question yeah that's one question I have um, I would also like to know this building proposed how many units does it have 
I tried to find out that information, couldn't come up with it. So how many units are in this building at 5539? Another good question. And how many parking spaces? Another question I have. Okay. Now the building across the street, which is uh, close to being finished, I believe, has 165 units. So I'd like to know to compare. Also, I couldn't find how many parking spaces are in the building across the street. I'd like to know that also. Okay. And one comment I have, and this is something I heard Saturday, Devolver Place has an SBD, and we had a meeting on Saturday. Mm -hmm. And some of the people there, and unfortunately I couldn't get them to come, are complaining about the building that's being put up now, all the trash, all the mud. In other words, the construction company hasn't done a very good job of keeping the neighborhood clean. And I realize this may not have anything to do with preservation, mm -hmm. but are we gonna have the same issue across the street? Pershing is a very busy street, lots and lots of traffic and that's been an ongoing concern. So you have this building that's almost finished. I'd just like to know why the company hasn't bothered to maintain the street and, you know, at least make some effort. I know weather, so on and so forth. Are we gonna have the same issue across the street while this goes on? My other question, and I realize, it may have nothing to do with historic preservation, mm -hmm. I actually worked for a historic preservation group some years ago. I'm quite familiar with what your duties are, mm -hmm. but I do have that. I, I am concerned and some of the neighbors are concerned about the upkeep of the area. Now this, this building is likely to be your neighbor if we approve it. Can you live with it? Right now at seven stories, I'd say no okay. because Six across the street, that was approved. I'd like to see six stories instead of seven. Also, you have three-story buildings on each side. It's going to be like an elephant. But, you know, I want to do what's best for my neighborhood. The Bolivar neighborhood has struggled over the years. We're struggling now with the trolley. <laughs> so. I want did, did somebody make you say that to me? No, no, but uh, no, I'm, I was never opposed to the trolley. I make one oh, joke yeah. a day about the trolley. Yeah, well, I don't want to make I, jokes I may, about I may the trolley. Have, I may have two now. From the very beginning, I thought it would be great, simply because federal funds were coming back into my neighborhood. My taxes were coming back to my neighborhood. Mm -hmm. That was one of my reasonings. But no, I've never been opposed to the trolley, but the congestion and with 165 unit building already being finished on Pershing and however many units this new one is across the street. I don't know how familiar you are with the neighborhood in Pershing, but boy, it is just gonna be awful when it comes to traffic. Does anybody on this side except Randy have a question? Anybody on this side have a question? Okay, Randy, have you got a question? Not really a question, but um, just, Having, I try to turn it into a question by saying, okay. don't, don't you agree? I, okay. So, um, and I, I was a resident of the Devolver Place neighborhood for a long time back in the early 2000s. And I think one of the, um, wouldn't you agree, that one of the, <laughs> one of the qualities that makes that an attractive neighborhood is, the, is its density, walkability, transit friendliness, and the diversity of, of structures and residents and all kinds of amenities that exist there. Um, density is a hallmark of, of any urban neighborhood and different building sizes and uses as, as part of that context and um, wouldn't you agree that that the Bolivar place is lucky to have some of those elements in place did I do that okay Richard I'm not sure oh. how lucky we are okay <laughs> I don't want to debate that yeah. it's a great area obviously I moved in there 17 years ago so I've been there a long time. I've seen a lot over the years. Mm -hmm. And I'm disappointed that 
this building was approved two years ago and I guess at, at five stories and now you're going to approve it. You, they want to be approved at seven stories. So I would compromise with six. It could match the building across the street. I think from what I've looked at, there's similar architecture in these two buildings. They could certainly complement each other. Mm -hmm. But I am very concerned about the company. Are they going to maintain our neighborhood? They have not done that so far in their whole process. Are we going to have another mess for however long it takes to build the new building? Well, the, the good news is that you're between Mr. Scott and the door. So you'll be able to ask him your questions be mm -hmm. be before he can get to his car. Yeah, That's I'm happy to stay as long as I need to. We'll see. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we'll just see. Further questions? Thank you very much. Thank you. Commissioner Richardson, have you got a motion? Did we answer any of those questions? We do not. Do, which, I mean. Uh, only the ones that pertain to uh Okay, Mr. Scott, could you come back, please? Yes. Why, why seven stories? Well, I would I would point out that for uh, for graphic accuracy, we indicated on the drawings as a seven-story building, but it actually appears as a six-story building. The reason for the seven story is a partially uh, subterranean portion of the parking garage that is noted um, on the elevations that we provided. As far as the, <coughs> the appearance from the street view, it appears as a six-story building. And if you were to compare it directly with the building across the street, it has a very similar uh, pedestal base and five stories above of residential units. Our pedestal base, um, if you're gonna measure in window height, uh, across the street is about two window heights tall as far as its pedestal base. Ours is about two and a half window heights tall. So we are a little taller on our base, but uh, the, the appearance of the two buildings we don't feel will be significantly different. And I believe it will actually appear as a six story building. How many units? There are, um, on the submitted set, there was 147 units planned. How many, how many parking spaces? And 160 parking spaces. Great, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's it. Okay, uh, Commissioner Vines, have you got a motion? Yes, I do, Mr. Chair. Um, and the densest person on this. I'm, I'm a density freak. But um, yes, uh, I move that the Preservation Board grant pre preliminary approval of this project with the stipulation that final documents and exterior materials can be reviewed and approved by the Cultural Resources Office. Is there a second? Second. It's been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? I'm abstaining. Abstaining? Uh, Commissioner Richardson is abstaining. The uh, motion carries. Okay, calling 2306-2308 Menard. Accusing Commissioner Killeen. Yes. Jan Cameron, Culture Resources. This is a, the site in the Soulard neighborhood historic district. It is in fact three parcels. Three parcels that are being re-subdivided into two. They are 20 foot parcels now. Um, the parcel to the north or the upper part of um, the site is uh, owned by the adjacent property. And then there's another owner on the south side. So I point that out because those two lots will not be considered developable in the future. So um, this is the proposed 
front elevation, it is in fact based on a model example. This building at 4417 North 20th Street in Hyde Park. I will note the difference. I think you can see that the buildings are somewhat wider than the model example. And the cornice does not wrap around both sides as it does in this example. Now this building has been somewhat altered, so the windows and the entry are not historic. But generally it's an acceptable model example. This is the proposed site plan. <coughs> and notice the buildings are L-shaped, so there'll be this long wall on one side, and then there will be a setback and the brick, as you'll see in a minute. Anyone wasn't going to get this to work. Okay. Brick will be here, of course, across the front, and it will return to. This it, it may be this mic right here. Um, and it will return approximately between a third and a half of this facade. The staff's concern is since this is not going to be a developable lot, I don't know. It may be the mic. I'll turn it off. Um, are you wearing magnetic jewelry again? Will be exposed completely to street view. Our proposal is to flip them so that the unarticulated elevations will be against one another and we will have a more attractive um, facade exposed to the street. And this is the more attractive facade. Um, the sided area on the elevation is set back and there's a chimney and it's a very um, well-articulated design, which you really can't say for this elevation, which not only doesn't have brick across the whole thing, but it has no openings. So the staff is concerned about that. Um, my understanding is that the developer is not in favor of our idea, nor is the Soulard Restoration Group or the Alderman for the district. So we're on our own on this one. But I would like to maybe suggest that if we are going to keep the site arrangement as it is, that the brick extend further on this elevation than is shown here. Um, this is the site plan. Those are the undevelopable lots. Um, I'm sorry, the site plan. It's a street elevation and uh, rendering from the southwest and the northwest. So, that's what the side is going to show us. Okay. Um, just very quickly, the context. This is the house adjacent on the north, um, looking towards Shenandoah. And this is the building. This is a contemporary building um, to the south. The opposite streetscape. This is actually about half a block down from the um, Star Building that we reviewed at the last meeting or the one before. And there, there was some concern expressed when I spoke with the developer uh, about being adjacent to the parking area for the multifamily to the south. So I included some shots of the current alley conditions. Okay. So again, the staff is recommending that something be done to mitigate the unarticulated facade at Street View, um, and with that condition, we recommend approval with review of final documents and um, materials. Questions? What the is the recommendation changed from the agendas, or or does that still stand as a recommendation? The the agenda is standing. Okay. Questions on this side? Yeah, I had one question. So, like, it, you said that there wasn't enough. Uh, you couldn't determine regarding garages, but yet the site plan shows a garage. So, would you, what would be required for garages if they were doing garages? Well, they'll be directly behind the house. So, the garage material has to be consistent with the standards. I don't think there's going to be any particular uh, worry about that. It's just that the drawings haven't been completed yet. Questions on this side? Thank you. Okay. You're from the applicant. Good evening. Uh, Mike Killeen, 3015 Salina. 
Um, so the design, um, I, I haven't had a chance to, uh, to talk to my client about some of the changes that Jan's uh, asked us to, you know, the adjustments she's asked us to make to the facade, so he'll be speaking next to that. Um, as far as how the buildings are sited, um, we uh, can understand cultural resources concern about that. Uh, the reason they are sited the way they are is um, that we were trying to create sort of a nice little urban oasis between the two buildings so those that the owners of those buildings could both get natural light and have a little peace and quiet. Um, we, we did consider doing it the way that, that uh, cultural resources suggested, but we felt it, it wouldn't be you know as, as pleasing a solution for the folks living there. So um, some thought did go into this design, and uh, I'll let the building owner uh, or the property owner talk more about that. So that's all I have to say at this moment. Questions for the architect? You always ask architect questions. Um, well, I just, just the question that, that came up with Jan and the Obviously, uh, because there's a bump out in the building, the articulation and stopping uh, the brick at, at the end of that makes sense. And so therefore, flipping it makes sense. Um, you know, might go a step further and say that since you're going to need a firewall uh, at uh, one of those, um, actually, no, that doesn't, yeah, you would, you would actually, it looks like, have less wall to, uh, to be rated, um, than you would with, with the, uh, current solution. Understood. It's, it's a good point. Um, however, um, I, I think what outweighed that uh, for my client was just to, to create that, that courtyard in the middle. Um, we, we've sided those buildings so they're on the property line. It would be great if we could put windows on the ends, but yeah, yeah we're, we're up against the code on that. Yeah. So any further questions? Thank you. Uh, my name is Richard Mitteke. I'm with uh, our company's Magton Development, who uh, are proposing to build these buildings on this lot. Um, so we've we actually started this process. It's going on three years ago. Um, we've been dealing with four different property owners to create these buildable lots in this section of this block on Menard. Uh, these lots were originally uh, just 73 feet deep. So we had to acquire, uh, like I said, four pieces of real estate from a, from a not-for-profit, from a private individual, from LRA, and also the street department uh, to vacate an obsolete alley behind these buildings. So uh, as it stood prior to us starting, these lots were uh, 20 foot wide uh, and 73 feet deep. Um, not very desirable, I would say. So. Um, so we've, uh, it's been a painstaking process to, to acquire these lots and ultimately redivide them into uh, to more typical uh, city lots, 30 feet wide and 150 feet deep to the main alley. So I, I'd say we've improved um, the property to, to the north as a private individual by, by uh, granting him um, more length to his property to the main alley um, so we've um, we've submitted our plans to the neighborhood group the SRG they have approved the plans including the, the site layout as we've proposed uh, with some modifications and some conditions uh, there are eight conditions in their letter um, and we are um, uh, we can accept those some, some of which we would have included in our plan uh, others will add cost to the development, but we are uh, we're happy to incorporate those, and some of which have have to do with the uh, facade and the cornice work that um, that was uh, expressed earlier. Um, uh, we can appreciate uh, cultural resources concerns with the with the layout. Um, 
and uh, we understand those. However, we, th we believe that our plan as we've submitted is a better layout. Um, th there's several rental properties uh, in this area. Um, and and uh, I, I've been a landlord. I know it's, it's difficult to control the, the behavior of your tenants. Uh, our layout would, would uh, protect a little bit uh, uh, that situation by, uh, by having the, the, the long building um, next to the, the, uh, the rental properties. It provides, as was mentioned, a, a sort of a courtyard between the two buildings, um, which I believe is more desirable than, a, than just a narrow, uh, narrow side yard to, uh, to the north and the south of these buildings, as uh, suggested. So um, I'm, I'm hoping that the board will consider our, uh, our site uh, plan and our uh, building layout as we've submitted. We've got, as I mentioned, that we've got approval. Um, I don't know if anybody's seen the letter from the Soulard Restoration Group with their conditions. Uh, we've got approval from uh, Alderman Coder uh, approving uh, SRG's uh, approval and conditions. Happy to answer any questions that you might have. Commissioner Richardson, have you got questions? Nope. Right. So, so yeah, we're able to uh, uh, satisfy the conditions by cultural resources, with the exception of the of the siting issue. He did, and everything. Yes. Is there a possibility of extending the brick on those thought elevations more uh, than you have? We would, we would consider that. It's, uh, you know, as you mentioned, about a third of the distance of the building. Uh, I think it's 30 feet of uh, brick on that long wall. Okay. Thank you. I'm sorry. Can we ask, hey, Jan, so what would you want him to extend it to? So while we're getting there, a, a rational breaking point at the end of the two story space. So quite a bit. We did, uh, we did talk with the neighborhood group about that. They have a, a rule of thumb that it, that it uh, extends the distance of the, of the um, open space. Uh, the, the lot next to it uh, is 20 feet. We we're 30 feet, 32 feet on the brick. Yeah. North is 20, south is 26. North is 20, south is, is 26, and we're at 32. But it would seem, if you're going to buy a model example, that this block would have been brick, and then this could be read as a small addition at the back, right. sided. Right. I would agree. So, so Jan, are you like e either, either flip the site plan or extend the brick? Either one works for you. Well, no, I would prefer to see the site plan flipped, but if the board decides that's not reasonable. And we'll indicate, if you look at the site plan here, these are going to be single families. So the first thing anyone that is going to do when they buy it is put a fence down the center. So the courtyard really is not, I think, practical, unless you're going to sell both properties to the same individual. Yeah, that was my thought too. I, I would put a fence up there, and I wouldn't want to look into my neighbor anyway. So I mean, what I mean, I, I think Jan's idea is more marketable than than your idea. Well, um, well, I I guess I would respectfully dis disagree. It's I mean, if you look at that that plan, the yard that you create, that narrow stretch, 
I would argue uh, that it's, you're right, it's not a, a private courtyard that's, that's double wide, but, uh, you know, uh, looking out from your, uh, you know, yeah, there probably will be a, a, uh, a fence down there, but it, but it, uh, I think, I, I still think it would create a courtyard look rather than a, uh, just a narrow side yard, which is really not usable to the property owner, I don't think. Um, uh, I would say this was, this was more of a yard, more convenient, and it does give uh, kind of a break be, uh, with the uh, with the rental uh, tenants to the south. Um, that that um, I mean, this is a difficult property to uh, to develop because of those conditions. I think it's probably why it hasn't been developed before we've come in, and I just think that's it's important that we have this. I'm going to call it a courtyard effect back there. So, would you rather have a courtyard effect and and do more brick, or? Uh, it, it's very important that we have that that courtyard, and and we would, we would, we would add brick to the north and south walls of the two buildings. Further questions? New questions? Uh, would, um, if it came down to, hypothetically, if it came down to uh, reconfiguring the site plan to match the suggested plan, would that be a deal breaker for sure? Would that uh, be no, um, no deal? We'd have to really think it. Uh, I mean, we've, like I said, we've been working on this for almost three years. Um, and I, I, uh, I'd say it's possible. Um, I'd say it's possible. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, I, I can tell you, brick is expensive. Uh, this is a tight uh, project for us. Um, we're not going to retire after having sold these. Uh, um, I mean, if 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 you could consider just adding some brick, some maybe another 10 feet of brick, uh, that would be more palatable, more uh, uh, reasonable uh, in my mind. If I could ask for that. 10 feet of brick would be what, <coughs> here? Takes you to 40. I think that's a substantial difference. Mm -hmm. What's up there now is 20. No, I'm sorry, 32, so it's a third. Right. But I'm, the point is to have the brick break at a at a logical point on the facade, I guess. So if we just if we're just extending it here, it doesn't really seem to make much of a difference. What if we were to create a false chimney? Remember we did that on the one on the Chimney, a good, yeah, thank you. So as you guys are considering your motion, a thought could be to create a breaking point right where we have the brick now. We could design a false chimney to go up there. Um, so it would, that could protrude a little bit from the building, perhaps. Although we're on the property line, the property so line. we'd have to shift the building slightly to make that happen. But that would be perhaps a compromise to consider. Or you could just shift to the other side of the site. There goes our beautiful courtyard, though. It's a visual thing. I realize there's a fence coming down the middle, but it's more of an open. So, uh, Mike, yeah, I, yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I apologize. I'm so now, now thinking about that, that chimney. Unfortunately, in order to to do that, you then have to slide the building over and well at least one of the buildings would need to slide over and so you end up basically with the same situation as far as as far as having that sort of narrow strip which I, I didn't think about until until you mentioned it so based on 
based on what we've got here. So to to do that, yeah, you you'd slide the buildings over, and then your court courtyard becomes at least a couple of foot narrower. Well, it could just be. Um, so as we look at this, I guess we can look at this one here. Mm -hmm. It could just be an, an eight inch bump in the building to create a chimney. True. Although, okay. historically, yeah. would we have had bumps in buildings for chimneys? Wouldn't they have been flush? Yeah. So just, it, so right, it wouldn't actually be like a suburban chimney. It would be flush, so we, we would just be going up. But so. just, just okay. another idea to consider. So it wouldn't push us in from the property line. I, um, if I may ask just a question, I'm just going back to the notion that um, the courtyard feature would would offer more privacy. I'm not really sure. I'm just trying to imagine if I were living there, and if I if it was a nice day barbecuing in the back, there are two independently owned, you, you know, units that almost like if the other neighbor were in their yard too, it'd be like you're all together hanging out, which isn't a bad thing if you get along, but it seems to me like if privacy were a contributing factor in this design, it would seem like you'd get more privacy with the suggested configuration because then you're not like hanging out, eating outside and having the kids play with what, the neighbors. What if they were brothers though? Or, well, or, that, or even that's twins. true too. And well, and that, Chief for good that. point. What if they were twins? Well, if you look at the, at the South building <laughs> work. <laughs> twins are so weird. If you look at the South building, that, that, uh, that looks onto the parking lot to the, uh, to the multi-unit rental property to the South. Mm -hmm. So the courtyard, to me, as an owner, uh, would be more, much more desirable than that. I understand. Um, and then my one last question. There was never any consideration of making them attached townhomes, was there? Uh, we considered a lot of things yeah. uh, over the years. Uh, that, that had been considered. Um, you know, we considered building three buildings on this six, on this 60 feet um, and where we ended up with uh, was was what we're presenting okay thank you I think the standalone properties are more desirable unattached um, it's been our experience we've done a lot of work in Soulard uh, in this neighborhood my partner lives in Soulard um, he's very familiar with this property we did work on the building uh, on Shenandoah to that private individual so uh, so we, we feel like we know the neighborhood. We feel like we know what's desirable. We've done some of our own development as well as work on uh, other homeowners' properties, dozens and dozens uh, in the area. Um, so, um, yeah, having been a neighbor, having been a resident, uh, it just seems to us that this would be the better situation, um, more so than an attached uh, uh, building with shared walls and. And I still think that, you know, even with a fence, it, it gives you that courtyard more so, more so than these narrow backyards. Thank you. Yeah. Mike, so the, the, the chimney on, on the other side, that's, that's an eight inch bump? Well, as I just um, clarified with Jan there, historically the, the chimneys wouldn't have had any bumps at all, so it would be flush with the building and oh. it could go taller got it. so any other question no no that was dan so when because i'm too young to remember this yeah. um <laughs> not 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 and i'm you. not obviously <laughs> <laughs> point in history did the chimney bumps start to be articulated oh I'm 20th century I would think yeah it's one thing that the vast majority of chimneys are coal or so they don't need the deep firebox that a wood-burning chimney does sure but even wood-burning chimneys they they came into the room 
Yeah. yeah, yeah so but the they, idea is that when interior space became more desirable, right. they started bumping them out. Sure. Sure. Yeah, I'm just thinking Central West, and we've got, you know, a lot of the houses have eight inch bumps. Yeah, too. The other uh, but, yeah, you know, those are built in the 1880s through 1910s. Early 20th century, yeah. Yeah. So, thoughts on chimney as yeah, so you get off for that yeah, as a way to articulate. They said they could accept it. I if if the flipping is out of consideration, I think I, I do not believe the flipping is out of consideration. But if it were, then I think the best thing would be to try to extend the brick to cover the two-story element on both sides. That would make sense. Um, to put a chimney there, again, it's, it's like extending it 10 feet. It's not really going to have a major impact. So, so another thought, um, just talking to Richard here, was it could be a combination of the chimney and perhaps that mass with on this elevation here with the siding actually shifts back slightly, eight inches. So there's a physical turn in the building. It's not as deep as on the other side, but oh, so. so the siding is is recessed from yes, the brick veneer, which plays a little bit of havoc with our floor plan. But we can figure it out. Somebody gets no closet. Maybe. <laughs> but I, I think the point is uh, that um, Mr. Medici is is willing to work. Uh, with you uh, with lots of different suggestions but the flipping of the plan really uh, he prefer to avoid that just they, they put a lot of thought into this and and that's the best plan that they they think that they can sell to the, you know, the public so I think we have sufficiently made the applicant the staff and other commissioners all uncomfortable and without any other questions Commissioner Richardson have you got a motion yeah, I move that the Preservation Board grant preliminary approval with the stipulation, um, with the following stipulations. One, that with the site plan that the applicant either revise it to expose the shorter facades on the north and south of the site as requested by staff, or alternatively, uh, keep it as uh, they submitted, but extending the brick to the end of the second story uh, section on the north and south side of each building um, and then number two that the front elevations including cornices and recessed entries be revised to more closely follow the model example and three that the final design details and exterior materials be approved by CRO for the compliance with district standards Is there a second second okay. do we need to discuss this nope okay then Motion has been made and seconded. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Dan, do you want to talk meeting? Oh, sure. Um, so next, the fourth Monday of next month is Memorial Day. It's a city holiday. So we can't have the meeting that day. We can't conveniently have the meeting that day. No, I, I need to have it that day. <laughs> <laughs> He's laughing. I was as serious as rabies. I'm sorry? I oh, said you, I was as serious as rabies. You've had that. I, it, you know, He's and, and I figured Dan could as also. A, as fellow rabies sufferer, <laughs> I understand. <laughs> um, but by the same token, it will be more painless just to meet on a different Monday. <laughs> So um, alternatively, I would just propose for ease of simplicity that perhaps we look at either doing it on the third Monday, which would be the 21st of um, May, or we do it on the first Monday in June, which would be the 4th of June. Thoughts? Uh, third Monday for me, I will be out of town the first Monday, although I may get back in time, but I'm not sure. So both of those are bad for you? No, no, no. Third Monday is good for me. Third Monday is good. Okay. I can live with the third Monday also. Me too. 
Me three. Okay then. Third Monday it is. Is there any other business? That's a 20, I'm sorry, that's the uh, 21 May. 21, right, okay. Okay. Staff, any other business? Do we hear a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Okay, we stand adjourned then, commissioners. Thank you.